Hey guys, so today I'm super excited to do this video. It is on a topic that I get asked about often, which is how to apply my makeup in photos to where it looks the most flattering. What are some tips on applying makeup for photographs? Um, whether you're going to be photographed for school, for prom, um, or you're just going out with the girls, you're going out for an event, your wedding, or whatever, basic tips that will help you look amazing in photographs where makeup is concerned. I'm going to give you the tips at the beginning. I'm just going to kind of go through and give you like my you know, list of like things that you need to <laughs> remember and good tips. Now my whole point of doing this is not to say, oh, you want to look super glamorous in photographs. You can apply your makeup as heavy or whatever as you want, but I'm just giving you the, the tips that are going to really make you look flattering in the photographs. So you can apply your makeup heavier, you can apply your eyeshadow heavier, use different colors, but you can utilize the tips that I give you um, in selecting your products and the application techniques and methods and like how to get your eyes looking the most flattering or you know how to bring out your eyelashes the best or how to make that because really that's what it's all about you want your eyes to really pop you want things to look flattering and um, that's what I like to do and that's what I like to do for photos so number one you definitely want to apply your makeup in a well lit area we all have those moments where we leave and we think oh, I didn't apply enough or well I applied too much and if this is going to be documented in a photograph for the rest of your life you want to get it right um, so just apply your makeup in a well-lit area. I love to use a primer um, when I'm doing photographs or I know that I'm going to be photographed. It's not something that I use every day, but my whole point of using primer is to like blur my pores. Not to necessarily put it all over my face and like hold my makeup in place, which it does help with that too. But I don't like to apply a lot of layers of product. So I've been really loving this L'Oreal Magic Perfecting ba Base. It's the Studio Secrets. I bought this the other day and I've really, really been loving it. I've had it for a couple weeks now. Um, but what I love about it is that it's like a balm and you can apply it just in the areas where you have pores or where you get shiny. And it's been really like, it's been doing it for me. I love it. Um, where your foundation is concerned, you want to select a formula that's going to leave a more matte to natural finish. Not something that's going to be super shiny. For that, I really love the Revlon Color Stay. I love the Normal to Dry Skin Formula, which is opposite of what you think I'd normally get because I have oilier skin. I find that the oilier, or the oilier, but the oily skin version of this is a little thicker, a little more cakey, a little more unnatural looking. There's ways to make it look natural. I know I've had it before. It's great. I'm sure a lot of people love it. But this one is just the easiest to work with. It's still a super long wearing, which is important, obviously. Um, but yeah, that's just the main thing. A matte to natural, more long wearing foundation, and this is it, and I love it. Setting powder is one of those things that we've all seen those horror photos of, like, where it looks ridiculous sometimes. If people don't, you know, blend just right or do this or that, I say take the guesswork out of it and just ditch the loose powder altogether. Nothing good can come from that. Yes, it's great. I'm sure people use it, and it's great, and I've used it for years, but it's just... It's unnecessary when you can use great pressed products that are out there and then you can just avoid that whole nonsense altogether and the whole chance of looking like a crazy. Um, but my very favorite is the MAC Mineralize Skin Finish Natural. It's so natural. It doesn't affect or compromise the pretty finish of your foundation that you've selected. This doesn't do that. It's very natural. Just apply a natural finished powder and you'll be good to go. And you can also take it with you for touch-ups, which is important if you're going to be photographed anyways. Blush, choose a product that's not overly frosted. You don't want the frost to reflect in the photos. You want the color to show up. Um, same with eyeshadow, and that's a biggie for this. I choose colors that are more, um, more of like a matte to like a matte shimmer and not so much a frost, because if you apply all frosted shades, when you get photographed, your eyeshadow is going to look all the same because the frost is just going to be reflecting. Um, and it's not going to have that good contrast. It's not going to really look like you have a lot of depth. And for this, I used my two favorite eyeshadow quads from NAR, or I want to say quads, they're duos. Um, the NARS Cordura, which you can see has some sparkle to it, but the color acts like a matte, like it's really, you know, this, these little shimmer particles aren't going to reflect like a solid frost would, so that's important to remember. And then the Kalahari, which has this one frosted shade, but you can kind of just use that in the center of your lid and not like so much all over. These are what I mostly have grabbed for over the years when I do something. The Cordura especially, obviously mascara, liner, you really want to bring out your lashes and have that at the forefront. And if you don't have long lashes, you can also use false lashes. I didn't. I think it's fine just to use mascara if you use a really volumizing product. And for your lips, you want to select a color that's a little darker than your natural lip color, but it's a little maybe glossy or shimmery so that it has a little bit of a depth, a little bit of something different. For my lips, I use the Sheen Supreme Lipstick in Supreme Style. It is one of my favorite colors. 
I love it so much. It's an easy color to take with you and touch up too. Contouring and highlighting can be a really flattering thing to do as well for photos, but if you do it too much, you can look a little overdone. You don't, you want to look like yourself. You don't want to look like you have really overly contoured yourself. So I'm going to give you my way of doing it with a bronzer that doesn't have too much shimmer or that's not too flat. It looks really natural and you warm up your skin tone at the same time. I like to do it all in one step. I'm going to use a bronzer that doesn't have a lot of shimmer, which for me is Laguna. In person, when you first look at it, it looks like it has shimmer, but you can see that mine is pretty matte after you start using it. And even products that look like they have shimmer, when you apply them on your skin, that's what matters. And this one applies in a very flattering, like, not, not frosted, not too shimmery, but not totally matte way. If that makes sense? It's just perfect. So, I apply it right there, right at the hollow of my cheekbones. Dust whatever's left on my cheek. Do the same on the other side. Then I go and I kind of go around my hairline. You can even kind of take a smaller brush and go along the sides of your nose. And then blend it with your fingers or with another brush and it just kind of slims your nose. You don't have to go super intense with like highlighting or anything like that. But if you did want a little something extra that's not going to show up as super crazy in photographs, the Too Faced Candlelight is a great option. And what I like to do with that is take a smaller brush, this is an F05, and take a little bit on the brush and just apply lightly to the tops of the cheekbones. And you don't want anything that looks super apparent as you're applying it. It will show up in the photos. It'll look, it'll look nice. But just make sure that it's really blended in, that you don't apply too much. And I like to apply just a tidbit down the center of my nose. Um, so that is my photography tips, everything that you need to know about looking your best in photos. As always, you don't have to use browns. You can use these same tricks if you wanted to go with purple. Just do the same sort of placement, the same dark. You could even layer a black over the dark purple, which is one of my favorite tricks to really like bring out your eyes. Um, greens, anything that you want to use, any color at all. But I find this is just the most universal and probably the most, you know, that people will be going with. So I hope that you guys found this helpful and that you're using these tips yourself when you want to look amazing in photos. And I will talk to you all very soon. Bye.